Welcome to the DDP. It is episode nine of the Devlin Duel podcast. My name is Martin Devlin. I work for the platform in New Zealand. Simon Duel about to join us. We've got much to talk about. The man cat, still a topic of conversation. And this on the back of Sophie Devine, White Ferns, a captain in the West Indies at the moment, where Simon also is saying that they will not use that. Under her tenure, they will not use that. As well as the ECB offering to host India, Pakistan. What's all that about? Why are they doing that? Why would they want to do that? Let's talk about the spirit of the game because I think it's really important to understand what that actually means. How do you define that? Plus, of course, I'll just remind Simon that New Zealand is, in fact, the greatest place in the world to live, despite the inflation, the cost of living, the petrol interest rates going through the roof, rampant street crime, and Christchurch Hospital telling us today that, um, look, if you do have a strain, grab a a pack of frozen peas and put it on it because we're just so overstaffed and under-resourced that there's no point coming in. A man of international class and well-being is Simon Dawley in the Caribbean at the CPL at the moment. Dawley, welcome back. Thanks very much, Marty. Nice to be here. Heading for the finish of your competition too. What's happening? Uh, yeah, a couple of games to go only. So uh, we had an eliminator last night. Um, saw the Jamaica Tellawas get home, uh, beat the St. Lucia Kings. So tonight, the Jamaica men take on the locals, the Guyana Amazon Warriors, and awaiting the winner of that is the Barbados Royals. Uh, who have been impressive throughout, really. Um, so they, they topped the table with eight wins from ten games. They've been dominant throughout, and um, they are waiting the winner of tonight's game. So Guyana up against uh, Jamaica, good rivalry. Uh, it'll be a packed house at um, the, the National Stadium in Providence in Guyana, which is a fantastic venue. So looking forward to it. All right, then. Will there be man cads? I know we spoke about this last week, and you say, no, it should be called a brown because brown was the actual batsman who was cribbing. Sophie Devine yesterday saying that, hey, us white ferns, we won't be doing this. Look, I don't, I don't want to, you know, use the word naive, but I just was thinking when Sophie said that, I was thinking, look, you know, if it comes down to a semi final or a final at T20 or a one day, it runs at an absolute premium. You've got to be pragmatic here, and you've got to tell that bats person, listen, if you go out of your crease and you try and get an extra run, go right up the other end where the other bats person is because I'm just going to run you or them out, surely. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's not about um, waiting for those moments. It's about if somebody's doing it on a regular basis and just basically stealing a, a, a foot, a yard, stealing, you know... A, that, that sort of margin out of the crease, because that's what that's the difference at the other end. And what people don't realise is, you know, if I'm a bowler and I overstep the mark by one centimetre, it's a free hit. It's, I'm done. So why should a batter be allowed to leave their crease? Now, people are saying, oh, but once the front foot's landed, you know, they should be allowed to leave their crease. No. The law now stay, states that you can run a person out at the, at the bowler's end. It is a run out. So do not leave your crease until the bowler has released the ball. I, I, I'd ask you, sort of anyone that's, that's arguing this point, to go back and look at the last year or so and watch what Virat Kohli now does and what Kane Williamson now does. They are the two best in the business at actually watching the bowler's hand nowadays. So they, they've got their bat in their crease, and as they're walking out and you know with their bat still in the crease, they're watching the bowler's hand, waiting for the ball to be released, and they do not leave their crease until that happens. That's the law. If you do it, whether it's an inch, whether it's two inches, whether it's two feet, you, you deserve to be run out, in my opinion. I can't transgress that front line as a bowler by one centimetre without it being a no ball and a free hit. Why should a batter get any advantage? Simon Doyle is with us, the DDP podcast. Look, you know, OK, it's not in the spirit of the game. I was arguing yesterday, mate, that go back to WG Grace, who was never out, right? He was. I, I, I don't think he got bowled one time. You got the underarm, you got the sandpaper. Um, you, you, you've, you've had all kinds of corruption in the game. I mean, the idea that it's been a gentleman's game, I, I just think it's been a myth for a very long time. It's like every sport. Everyone's trying to bend it. Everyone in rugby plays the offside line. Everyone in football dives and squeals when they get put over in the penalty area. You never call a ball out in tennis. You wait for the for the uh, video eye to actually do it. It's just yeah. part of it, isn't it? And it's the same as baseball to me, mate. If you're off the bag, the you know the uh, pitcher can turn around and get you out at first, second, third base if, if his baseman is there. You know, it's the same thing yeah. to me. I just think people have got to get the their spirit, heads around it. The spirit of the game is an absolute crock of bollocks. Uh, that, that's what it is. I mean, everybody quotes the spirit of the game when it's convenient or when it suits them. Now, if you play the game in the right spirit, that has nothing to do with the laws. You, you, if you play it in the right spirit, you're playing it as fair as you can play it within the laws of the game. 
when you have a law that states you cannot leave your crease or you will be run out, that is it. There's not, that, that, that doesn't have anything to do with the spirit of the game. What goes on the field stays on the field. That's part of the spirit of the game to me. You know, play it hard. Play it on the field. Play it hard. And when you walk off, just forget about it. That's all around the spirit of the game. For me, the spirit has nothing to do with the laws of, of cricket or the rules of rugby or the you know, anything else. It's just purely and simply something that is doddled out when it's convenient for someone to say, oh, that's not in the spirit of the game. I mean, bugger off. See, and they're also making, you know, the the actual game so much harder, are they not, for, you know, those with the ball in their hand. I mean, the pitches are becoming easier. We want more runs, uh, you know. So, you know, the idea of bowlers having to vary it and, and, and invent new deliveries and everything else. I mean, this is, you know, to me, the idea of running between the wickets is an art in itself. You've got to get your timing exactly right. And you see how many runouts are just within millimetres, centimetres, and you know, I mean, that's an exciting part of the game. Look, I, I, I just don't get, I don't understand anyone that says that this is somehow wrong. What is wrong to me is you are trying to crib is what is wrong. And I'm going to take you, mate. If that's the yep. case, I'll warn you maybe once. I might warn you once and just say, dude, I see what you're doing. I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to knock the bales off. But here's the, here's the other thing to that, right? Does a batsman or a wicketkeeper, you know, does a batsman warn a bowler, oh, I'm going to run, out, run down the crease at you. I'm going to run down the wicket at your head. Does a wicketkeeper have to warn a batter when he leaves his crease? You know, he's got a stumping opportunity. He says, oh, I'm not going to take the bales off this time, but next time you run down the crease and you get beaten by our spinner, oh, I'm going to take the bales off. There's no such thing as a warning. You shouldn't have to be warned because, I'll go back to the point I made earlier, it is a law. It is a law of the game. There is no warning. You follow the laws, and if you break the laws, you deserve to be out or you deserve to be penalised. I love what you're saying as well, mate. Simon Dool with us on the DDP, um, is that you play the spirit of the game. That's where, you know, you front up, you play hard, you give it a bit of jip, you give it a bit of verbal, um, but you treat everyone as you do with all human humanity. You treat them with respect and you treat them with kindness and things. You fight till a bitter end. But at, that, to me, is, I totally agree with you, that's in the spirit of the game. If you roll over, it's not in the spirit of the game. If you're some mouthy, abusive person on the field, that's not in the spirit of the game. So I don't actually no. think these two, you know, I don't, the spirit of the game argument, I and totally if, agree with you. Know, you. If, somebody, if you see somebody in trouble at the bottom of a ruck and you say, hey, whoa, whoa, boys, you know, look, you, you stop the game, you, you, you sort of, to their rescue, you put them on their side, that's in the spirit of the game. If someone gets hit and you go and, you go and see if they're okay in a game of cricket, that's the spirit of the game. That's playing the game in the right fashion. The laws are there and the rules are there for a reason. Just follow them and you'll be okay. Why have the ECB offered to host India, Pakistan? I know I'm probably naive asking that question, but <laughs> of, okay, so you, so neither country can because really... Because they will make a fortune. Ah, okay, right. Okay, right, sorry. I thought it was <laughs> because there might have been... Uh, money. I, I thought it was political <laughs> strife or something or safety or... or, or ter- okay, right. Look, I mean, ECB have, have come out this week and they've said they've, they've more than happily host a three-match series, a test series between India and Pakistan in England. Uh, they would love it. The, the, the people of England would love it, whether they be of Pakistani or Indian descent or whether they be English-born. Um, they would all love it. And they'd sell out three stadiums, probably in the north, I would say. Um, you know, you go to Leeds, you definitely go to Manchester, I would imagine, and probably Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. And you would just absolutely sell those grounds out for an India-Pakistan test series. The issue comes down to politics in India, more so than anything. I think Pakistan would jump at it because it would be a windfall for them as well. But I think the politics in India would never allow that to happen. And, and that's the shame of it all. And, um, you know, I, we, we all want to see a, a, a test series play, but I, I want to see it played in India or in Pakistan. Okay. And until that's able to happen, I'm just not sure that it should happen elsewhere. Um, that, that would be my only thing around it. But the ECB want to do it. And, and you know, and, and people in England would love to have it. And e- ECB would make a fortune out of it. That's the main reason behind trying to have it. First test in Kashmir, and then we'll see what happens after that. Shall we? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's exactly. where they lined up their exactly. nukes on both sides of the border, isn't it? But that yeah, rivalry, exactly. Dooley, must be, that would be, that surely in terms of all, I'm talking international sport, would have to be one of the greatest sporting rivalries of all, wouldn't it, between those two? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and it would be, like, a cricket match between India and Pakistan would be the most watched sporting event or one of the most watched sporting events in the world i would imagine outside of maybe a a super bowl a super bowl might garner more around the world but i think if you you know if you looked at it an india pakistan um game a one-day game or a t20 game would probably get as much 
television audience as any other sport in the world, uh, uh, up there with a world uh, football World Cup final. Those yeah, it's not crazy things. to say so, it. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. And and the, the beauty of it, Marty, after the game in um, Dubai last year, there was some amazing footage of all the players just mingling and mixing. And they never get to do that. And yeah. this is the problem with the world game at the moment. They never get to mix and mingle and have a chat. You know, Virat Kohli was holding court with about four of the Pakistan players out in the middle of the, the cool. field in, in Dubai. Cool. There is no animosity between the players. I'll tell you that right here, right now. There is absolutely zero animosity between the two players. And I'd just about go so far as to say that 95% of the two countries would get on. Yeah. It's just the politicians. It, 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 is, <laughs> it, is, it is political, and, yeah. and I don't begin to try and understand nah. it, and I won't begin to try and explain it. All right, we've got to talk about the Dunhill too, and I just I find this so amusing that we talk about the Dunhill. That's a cigarette brand, people. Okay, that's the name of a golf tournament. That's a cigarette. <laughs> but um, Ryan's playing that. Ryan Fox, our good mate Ryan's playing, and unfortunately, your dear old mate. And I've I, I've interviewed him a couple of times and met him a couple of times. I love Shane Warne to bits, and I know he's a good mate of Ryan's as well. Warney's not there. It's um, Dooley. Today is also the funeral. Um, the, the public funeral for Willie Lossie in Auckland at Eden Park as well. And just, you know, it really sits you down and makes you think we've lost some again, mate, haven't we? Young young men too. Yeah, we've lost lost far too many young men, far too young, Marty. And, and, and you know, we need to realise that, yes, health checks are a big part of it, but also just, you know, live your life, mate. Live your life and don't have regrets and, and, and do whatever, whatever it is you, you want to do as far as, um, you know, being a, a good, decent human being is, but live your life, you know, make the most of it. Those two guys did, certainly. Um, but, yeah, I, I felt for Foxy a little bit. I, I messaged him the other day, just had a quick chat to him about, you know, this is his first one, and I think it might be eight years or seven years that he won't have played with, with uh, Warney as... So the Dunhill is a um, a pro event with an amateur partner. You play three rounds, one at Kings Barnes, one at Carnoustie, and one at St Andrews, and then the final is always played at St Andrews with the best 20 amateurs and the pros um, playing for prize money. And um, it's organised by a guy called Johan Rupert, who owns um, Richemont, which own Dunhill, Cartier, uh, Mont Blanc, um, all of those uh, companies. And it, look, he just he t- puts on one of the most magnificent golf tournaments that I've ever had the privilege of playing in. And um, obviously, uh, you know, Ryan and, and Warney have been playing in it for years. And he said, he said to me the other day, he said, it's going to be a bloody tough one, mate. He said, it'll be a really hard week, but um, I'll try and try and remember the good times and um, and think about what uh, the things we achieved. Last year, I think they went, I think they went 12 under or 13 under on the last day to just miss winning it. So um, he's got some good memories there, but it's a, you know, it's a tough old week. And Foxy's obviously coming off a, um, a knee injury, which he struggled with for the last couple of weeks. So hopefully he goes well. All right, then you're in the Caribbean. You then go back to your place in Dubai. Just to let you know, New Zealand at the moment, mate, Christchurch Hospital has just announced, uh, please use frozen peas on any strains. They don't have enough beds or enough people to deal with you in the hospital. They're saying treat your own wounds at home. Don't come in. We had a shop open in Auckland yesterday. The whole place shut down. All the motorways shut down because of the traffic as well. You know, inflation through the roof, cost of living through the roof, petrol up, interest rates are up. Rampant crime. We have ram raids. The police can't stop them. We've got youths just bursting into jewellery shops and malls and smashing the hell out of people and, and, and cabinets and stealing stuff. So come back to New Zealand for the summer, mate. Yeah, I'll be fine. Thanks, Marty. I'll, I'll stick with my zero crime, uh, 1.2% interest rates and um, cost of living very, very manageable in Dubai. Uh, I, I, think I'll, I think I'll be okay with that. Thank you very much. Devlin. Unbelievable. Incredible. The Platform.